Hello class, welcome to today's lesson on active versus passive recovery. Now recovery is an important concept because we have to be able to grow and repair from previous workouts or activities, but also increase our performance for future workouts or activities. The key is finding a balance between active and passive recovery. Because what we have to do is replenish those nutrients in our body, repair those different tissue parts, so for our it will enhance our future performance and injury prevention. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at what are some of the differences between active and passive recovery and what are some of the benefits of each. Before we look at passive versus active recovery, let's look at rest versus recovery. So we say rest. Rest is just a complete day off without exercise. So for athletes, usually... Most of the time, they don't want a complete rest day. But there might be some times, depending on the needs, that there might be appropriate if you're injured or if you're just overly exhausted to have a complete rest day. Most of the time, athletes want to incorporate some type of recovery. And these are techniques or actions to maximize body's repair. And again, they can be passive or active. They usually include some type of activity. So recovery will help that growth and repair in the body. What is active recovery? So in the title it says active, so we're looking at doing things, not just resting and sitting around. So one thing you can do is exercise at a lower intensity. So it's not your workout, that it's going to be at a restorative pace, 60-70% of the effort. And even lower than that, it would be 40-60 to 60 for beginning athletes. So again, you're still doing exercise, but not at that intensity, the workout intensity. You can also incorporate mobility exercises. These are where you're moving through the joint range of motion. I'm not holding at a certain point. I'm not doing something like a static stretch. I'm moving through that range of motion to keep that flexibility and help the muscles recover. Self-myofascial release is we use foam rollers and you're massaging the muscles. Again, that, that helps with the recovery of the muscles and helps get blood flow to the muscles and help repair the tissues. Active recovery is beneficial because you're still moving, you're still using those muscles but at a lower intensity. So it reduces our mental and physical stress and allows our muscles to recover and build because you're still supplying the blood to the muscles, supplying nutrients to the muscles, which helps with repair. And it's also going to help strengthen the joints and ligaments around the muscle. It also reduces the amount of waste products like lactate okay, in the muscles, in the bloodstream. And it's going to help us and our bodies adapt to our training intensity. So that lower intensity of the active recovery kind of helps us repair not only physically but mentally and get us ready or physically and mentally for future workouts. What is passive recovery? So just like active, when we look at passive, it's telling us that we're replenishing the body but not using activity or exercise to do that. We're doing things like eating and hydration, replenish our glycogen stores, our fluids, Cold water therapy helps with any inflammation that might have occurred during exercise. Massage increases the blood flow so our muscles get more nutrients and also get rid of the waste products. Sauna, sweat, getting rid of waste products. Electrostimulation, that's where we're working the, the muscle fibers passively. And rest and sleep, this is where your body can repair and replenish. What are the benefits of passive recovery? The biggest benefit of passive recovery is to help replenish those fuels in the body and our fluids. So it helps with glycogen resynthesis where it breaks down glucose and puts it into the, the stores in our body. It also helps reduce lactic acid, not as effective as active recovery, but it does contribute to reducing that lactic acid. Now, passive recovery by itself, is, it's effective, but not completely effective just by itself. 
because it's not going to help improve performance as much as active recovery. So athletes should incorporate both passive and active recovery methods into their program to get the maximum benefits out of the recovery. Summarizing today's lesson, active and passive recovery is important in athletes' program because it enhances performance but also helps prevent injury. Rest is refraining from exercise. Recovery is the training and actions that help with growth and repair. There are two main types of recovery. We have active recovery where the, the athlete is going to use light exercise, mobility exercises, and self-myofascial release to help with growth and recovery. Active recovery is important because it helps adapt to future workouts and helps the body repair and the muscle provides nutrients and gets rid of the waste products from the muscles in the body. Passive recovery includes things like eating, hydration, cold water therapy, massage, sauna, electrostimulation, sleep, and rest. Passive recovery benefits more for replenishing your body with those different nutrients. So for an athlete, they need to have a balance of both because they need to increase that performance but also replenish the body so it has the energy for future performance. What you should do is look at your program, your workouts, and how are you incorporating the different recoveries into your programs? Are they effective? What changes could you make?